And welcome back everyone, welcome back to It Moves. Let's carry on with this disturbing game. Not load. It seems like we're in the sort of little classroom, right? It says woof. It says woof, and it's Frankenstein. Great. Ooh, them piano skills, unmatched. Do it again. Mmm, that's lovely. That was the best song ever. Do it again. No, please don't. A bunch of school books. So we are in a school. A poster for a play. Alrighty. Is there anything in these desks? Doesn't seem like it. The feeling that something's invading your privacy, even without ill will, is still disturbing. Ooh, very ominous. Very ominous. Ominominous. Ominominominous. What the? That looked like something out of an amnesia. You are good. Damn straight I'm good. A bunch of school books. Is that a grenade? That looks like a goddamn grenade. I am good. You are good. You are? Good. Yep. The clock is stopped. The clock, the clock is st 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 stopped. Even if you don't know why they are there, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. Didn't I go in another room? Hmm, never mind. There's a bathtub in here. In the middle of the classroom. It's totally normal. An old picture of what seems to be a religious man and a woman. It's a triceratops. Surrounded by the pie symbol? What the hell? A stack of comic books. You should probably grab one. It'll keep you entertained in this beautiful school house. Alrighty. Disturb. Boop. Beep. Boop. <laughs> Disturbing. The sounds of screams are awful. They're even worse when they're your own. Indeed. Indeedly doodly. The newspaper article is too aged to read. Oh, that was a door. Ooh. Locked. Let's not disturb the person that lives there. Arr. It sounds like someone has like a really upset stomach. <laughs> really. A big filing ca cabinet. A big filing ca cabinet. Looks like there is nothing inside. Various books that look like they would be hard to read. Writing desk with some school material on it. The same? The same. This has a note on it. You don't want to read the note? Come on. Fine. Beautiful room. Pictures of various butterfly species. Lovely. Oh man, I know. What did you eat? It sounds like you have a bad case of the rumbly tummies. A pile of mattresses, dirty and worn out. And a big hole. What else is there? There's a piece of paper in here. It reads, knock knock. There's a piece of paper here. The text on it is illegible. So the text changed. Interesting. Who's there? Who's there? Who knocked? Ah! What the hell? Oh, fuck you. Ah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Where did I enter this room from? How do I escape it exactly? Where's the exit? Oh, it was there. Fine. I'm getting the feeling that I have to follow the monster, but I want to see the story as well. There are various school rules printed here. Fascinating. What's in here? Oh. Okay. Okay, okay. Alright. Well, this happens sometimes. That's a lot of mattresses, though. Um... Okay, 
anything in here? Never mind. Nope. Oh, god damn it. Stupid sheep crossing. Am I stuck now? Seriously? Oh, <laughs> this is fucking amazing. Urgh. Okay, let's not go back into that room because I had to replay everything. It's fucking annoying. The lock on the door is broken. I don't think I can get in there. What about here? Oh, there's a big hole in the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was your hole. That's what he said. Hey, monster. Where are you, monster, monster? Plants grow through cracks in the floor. Yep. That's some Aztec shit going on right here. A busted old machine of some sort. Busted old machine. B -b busted old machine. Yeah, we have to go down. Down, deeper and down. That looks amazing. I am so sorry for this kid. He has like the worst nightmares ever. Oh god. Ouch. It sounds like he's wa walking on broken glass. I don't even know if I'm going the right way. Shit, this is a huge place. Feels like I'm walking around in circles. And every time I change the screen, someone yells. Oh, and now the light is following me. What the hell? I'm sorry if my walking is disturbing your stomach. Sounds like a good party. Party, party. Run, kid. Run as fast as you can. Are we stuck in a loop again? What the fuck? Hi, monster monsters. It looks like a big ol' clowny clown. I guess we have to get sacrificed. Yay! Yep, get on that slab. Might as well get this over with. It's a party! Scary, terrifying fuck party. Hey, this isn't that bad. They're quite good at this singing stuff. they sang to me before ripping me apart. You're awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. All right, then. I woke, gradually. The room was once again dark. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and the door, and the walls, some toys on a shelf, and... Even to this day, I shudder to think of it, for there was no noise. No rustling of sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless. Lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor that that unwelcome, wheezing, hate-filled thing which had terrorized me night after night, was not in the, in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I could not scream, I did not want to let it know I was awake. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. It was obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline, and I could feel its presence, but I dared not look. The weight of it pressed down on top of me, a sensation I will never forget. When I say that hours passed, I did not exaggerate. Laying there motionless, in the darkness, I was every bit a scared and frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months, it would have been light by then. 
but the grasp of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise. A sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I reached a breaking point. A moment where I could wait no more, where I could survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you threadbare, a shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace of you behind. I had to get out of that bed, then I remembered the crucifix. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist around to find it, minimizing as best I could the sound and vibrations caused, but it could not be found. I had either knocked it off the top bunk, or it... I could not even bear to think of it, been, ta been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost any sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is, and intensely frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there, dormant, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leap from the bed and hope it, and hope that I make it to the door? What if it's faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of that top bunk, hoping not to disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that it had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. Chapter 6 The Abyss Oh my, this looks absolutely lovely. So we're, um, in water now. Quite, quite interesting. Hey, fishy. This doesn't look that scary, or maybe it will get scary because something will probably pop out and grab me from the algae. So where do I go? Down? Deeper and down? Or to the left? To the left. Hey, little fishies. How you doing? Doing great? Doing fine. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. This isn't frightening at all. I actually quite enjoy swimming. It really reminds me of the Heart of Darkness game. It was kind of set in the same way. What's this? Hey, this thing kind of activates when I'm near it. Interesting. Is it like a port or something? Just go. Hey, look, there's the corpse of my dad. Lovely. So I, I can't. Oh, can I reach it? How do I reach that door? Drain water and remove diving gear. Sure. I hate jellyfish. Dad? Yo, Dad! Come back here! Read logbook. Whoa, that's a lot of text. One of, one of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic, when you consider the fact that I'm now working on a mining station thousands of feet underwater in the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest trench in the whole world. I've always wondered why I was afraid and reached a simple conclusion. The true fear presented here is actually going down beneath the surface into the depths. It's a combination of all our most common fears. Fear of the dark. When you're at the bottom of a body of water, you can't see anything. It's pitch black. Have you ever tried to swim as far down in a lake as you can? It gets really dark and cold really fast, about 10 feet down. But even that's nothing compared to the deepest point on the entire crust of the Earth, located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench, which is 38,000 plus feet deep. If you put Mount Everest at the bottom of the trench, the top of the mountain would still be over a mile below the surface of the ocean. Everything below you is complete darkness. 
and this definitely plays into our collective fear of the dark. That's very true. How do I go to the next page? All right. Ooh, that's a lot of text. Fear of suffocating. You can read this because it probably details uh, what these fears are all about. Fear of the unknown. Fear of flying insects. Oh, I hate those. Fear of being caught. You can just pause the video and read it. That was an interesting read. What else is there? Can I go even further down? No, nope, no point. Gotta follow Daddy-O. Daddy-O? This looks amazing for an RPG ga game, by the way. Look at that anglerfish. and down into the depths of the earth. Holy shit. Did a big giant wor worm from Dune just appear? Am I dead? What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I had woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it had finally got me. That I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toying with me after all it had been doing just, just that for countless nights, and now with me under it, pinned against my mattress with no mother to protect me. Maybe it was holding off, savoring its victory until the last possible moment like a wild animal, savoring its prey. I tried to breathe as sh shallowly as possible, and mustering every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off of me. What I found under, under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror, as I was sure it, was, it must now have known that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest, with the hand resting on my left shoulder as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would, ha that I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in, in my stomach and in my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of the straggled, oily hair. I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wondered to this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. Chapter 7 Hostia Hostia? Hostia? What does that mean? Leave it in the comments. God, the visuals are absolutely amazing in this game. And on that note, I will leave it for the next episode. Thanks for watching, leave a comment, leave a like. I always appreciate all the feedback I receive from you guys. And see you in the next episode.